This is White Rose Knight, and we're doing our countdown of the cartoons from the 90s. Jaco's favorite. Are you there, Jaco, honey? I'm here. No, that's good. Like before, we'll do from, we'll count down from 10 to number 1. Oh, yeah. And I'm ready tonight. Last time show, I wasn't exactly ready. But now I am. Pre <laughs> <laughs> Presenting Rugrats, a classic cartoon from the 90s. Written and created by Paul Gehrman. The show focuses on a group of toddlers, most pronouncedly Tommy, Chucky, twins Little Phil and Angelica, in their day to day lives, usually involving common life experiences to become an adventurous baby's imagination. When I grew up when I grew up watching the show, Tommy was my favorite. Chucky was adorable. The twins mm -hmm. would remind me of my sister because we were like Irish twins. That's for my cousin Angelica and that's for Angelica. Oh god. If I had her for Chris, I'd be screaming my butt off. Yeah. Then later on she we ended had, up becoming oh. number one on one promotion. Bad girls list. Oh yeah, very bad. Then Baby Dill. It was, been, it was yeah. also Rugrats was also one of Nickelodeon's most successful popular shows, running for nine seasons. Indeed, we had the crazy father inventor who inspired me to uh, create things, and the open-minded mm -hmm. mother, but Larry Love and Jen. But luckily, we had Susie Carmichael to keep the babies away from Angelica's clutches, if you know what I mean. And then Baby yes. Keith. Then baby Kimiko came in. Basically the bodyguard. Oh yeah, the, the bodyguard. Were the things you named, roughly. Mm -hmm. Later in the show, the cast got two new additions. Yep. Which I must have already heard. Mm-hmm. And Chucky's got a stepsister. Yep. Kimiko. Kimmy. I love their show. I love Kimmy. She was my. She was like a female yep. version of Tommy. Yeah, that's what Chucky said. The Paris movie. Oh, great. Another Tommy. And I could say this. These two have been shipped in many cartoons. I mean, if you know what I mean. The grown up best friend. We'll talk about that show a different time. And yeah. Not only went for nine seasons, but being a total of three movies. Exactly. The one being a crossover with Wild Thornberry. I say, old babe, where's the kip ass? My dad does a better impression than I would say, though. <laughs> but yeah, I seriously go. I love the show. And seeing that, well. Angelica always had a doll with me, and as for me, I had my doll with me, and I still have my doll with me. But all I can say is this, the show was really good. Tommy was my favorite, as always. He goes, well, he reminded me of my of my sister. She was always responsible for looking after me when I was little. And that's normal for anyone who has a little brother. In the sequel series. Oh yeah, Over the sequel. High school years. But there was something we knew, but there's something, oh, go ahead, love. Sorry. Tommy gains dancer while Dill gains his mom's hair. Mm -hmm, that's true. A little bit of a, you know, a crazy. It's yeah, like but we're talking about rug rats, not grown up love. Yes. Also, we never get to know what happened to Chucky's mom, but all we can say is Kendra could be the thing. We do. See, he does reveal. I think it's revealed that she eventually died. And find out that he was born. Probably so. But in any case, Lil and Phil definitely are one of the coolest groups. But then again, we're off topic here. Next show would be Hey Arnold! A classic show <laughs> created by Craig Bartin at Nickelodeon from October 7, 1996 to June 8, 2004. The show centered around a fourth grade named Arnold who lived with his grandparents in an inner city boarding house. It was centered on an experience negative living through the city life and dealing with problems in his friend's encounter. And my favorite episodes are the legend ones. They're really creepy. Go on, love. Mm -hmm. Like the giant fish that he the ghost brine. <laughs> and my favorite, the haunted train. Or Weezing Ed. And Je <clears throat> Helga was one of my favorite characters because I actually can t I actually can actually feel Angelica. I mean, Helga feels. 
when I was growing up, I had the big sister who was the big and very good, did everything yeah. awesome, and I was the one that the second banana to my sister. But unlike in but unlike Helga and and Olga, me and my sister got along really well. And as for Draco, he has several siblings. And I'm sure that he can tell how Helga was. Go on, honey. If it wasn't for yeah. Yeah. They didn't focus all their attention on her sister. She never would have gone. She never would have had a. She never would have met Otto and developed a crush on him. Yeah. In the earlier story, in the earlier past of Helga, Helga was treated badly by her father and her mother, and her sister was the only one who did saw that she loved her sister, but never showed, but never really knew of how much impact that she did on her sister. But more important, we got important thoughts that on Arnold. Arnold never knew about his parents, never met them, until we got the Arnold movie and that was pretty good. But I love that Arnold can be... Oh, go ahead, honey. Your thoughts. Sorry. Yeah, yes I am. He knew about his parents then he was told, I think, later in the show why they left. So, the drive was green IP. That's true. Also, he was around his best friend Gerald, a street smart character who generally served as the leader of the group, and Helga, of course, the girl who tomboy and always bullies but loved, drew inspiration from people he grew up when he was creating the characters for the show. Arnold lived in a crazy life with his parents, I mean his grandparents, Phil and Gilchard. And Gilchard is the wild of the bunch, who is one of my favorites. Who made me my great aunt Deanne? Trust me, they're both the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably the Sunset Army boarding house in the fiction city of Hillwood. In each episode, he offers a schoolmate, a boarding home, a tele a tense and no solving personal problem. In Calvary Predicting Men's of his own, rips are involved on brain legends, usually told by Gerald, such as a superhero or headless horseman. Or should I say, the headless cabbie? <laughs> Go on, love. It's already one. That was one Arnold told Oh, yeah. And there are also some episodes that focus on other characters, like Gerald, Iggy, Rocka, Phoebe, Helga's best friend, mm -hmm. then there's a bit of a bookworm. Oh, yeah, one of my favorite characters. So, yeah, it's for Gerald. All I could say is this, the first junk, the first Hey Arnold movie, was not very good standards, and thank God they made the Hey Arnold Jungle movie this uh, last year, which turned out to be really good. All mm -hmm. I can say is this: Beepers are last year, Big Bob. Come on, seriously, you had to force your family to move into a Beeper Emporium. You were so bad at this. I mean, <laughs> that's what I wanted to say, and believe me, Bob, you're worse. Trust me, my dad's a way better parent. And some fans are also speculating that they all showed you were right that the Jungle movie came out. A lot of people are thinking that, but a lot of people are reviewing and saying that the movie didn't come out so good. Some said it was good, some said it was just... <laughs> but as for me, I adored it. Especially the animation part. I actually think it was good. Mm. But I mean, development, they say. Yes. Our next program is the Powerpuff Girls, American Superhero Animated Television Series created by Craig McCracken, a genius. Producer of Hanna Barbera, latest cartoon studios for Cartoon Network, show centered around Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, three kindergarten age girls with superpowers with their father created and named Professor Utonium. The girls live in a fictional town called Townsville, in the USA, frequently called upon the city to help fight Neary villains with superpowers. Go on, love. The show went for a total of six seasons. And then early on, in order to feel that Mojo was unintentionally involved in their creation. That means, dun dun dun! He's the father of those girls! Ew! Basically, all he did was simply push. He was basically a little kid molded by the professor. Who had a nasty habit of breaking everything he can get his paws on. Correct, Amanda. And of the villains of this show that I kind of liked growing up was, well, actually scared me was him. Now, him had about two. Yes. Some say he was the. Some say he was the devil, but due to censored reasons, they just called him him. But in the series, he had twenty episodes. But in the but in the Pulp of Girls remake, pfft, only three. Only three. This is the only 
me and what I have to say about how it goes the remake. It sucked. Him was only in three episodes, but in the, but in the one I grew up with, twenty episodes. That's what I wanted to say. The only ones where he teamed up with other villains, like the Beatles. Mm-hmm. Other villains in the show, uh, also the Gang Green Gang. Remember those hooligans? Like, oh yeah, very big. And of course, Duncan. and of course, Princess, the most spoiled, is rotten as bread. Compared to me, more worse than Angelica and Helga. Seriously, it's due. And then of course, there's Fuzzy, voiced mm -hmm. by one of my favorite voice actors, Jim Cummings. Later in an anime series, we see that why, um, sorry, sorry, love. Because, hello, trivia, Jim Cummings actually was born and raised in the South. Good to know, honey, good to know. And to tell you the truth, in the anime series of Powerpuff Girls, we later found out why Princess was acting like that, because her sister was taking shadow over family. But then again, in the, in the cartoon series, we only saw Princess and her father, no mother, no sister, just them yes. and only servants. In any case, my favorite character was Blossom, because you can guess, well, we're book reforms and educational enthusiasms. I'm going to say like all three of them because of their characteristics. Blossom being a smart leader, Bowling being cute, not a lover of animals, and Buttercup because she's the tomboy of the group. Oh yeah, tomboy. I love Buttercup. But there was such fun episode where, oh god, depending on a blanket. And she would say, I am a good fighter. I am a good fighter. I am a good fighter. She was going to be one ballistic when she lost it. Then there was that other episode. Oh, go on, love. Actually, an appearance in the flashback episode. But when it comes to Pop and Girl Wolves, I would say my favorites would have to be the Rowdy Rough Boys. Mine are him, Mojo Jojo, Funny Lumpkins, but not the spoiled brat, and of course, the three bad boys we all know and love and hate. But also, Boys. yes, them. But in due to respects, I would say some of the episodes were good, but some of them were just bad. The worst episodes I would say for the Power of Girls when they had was when Bubble when Bubble stole the golf course for his dad, for her dad, yeah, and, that's, that's and one of her, that's not one of her best moments. And the next one is at sea. Buttercup stealing everyone's teeth and knocking them out of their mouths, and then oh, yes. I remember this. When Mojo came out of the dentist's office, and he saw him, Fuzzy, and the game, and he's asking, What happened to you guys? Yeah, the and team got messed up. And the next bad episode that Bubbles, that Bubbles did? Oh my god. Bubbles, you cannot do that. You cannot take all that money to give to a guy on the TV show who's faking it. He's faking it. He's not a real guy from a TV, from a world of fun and smiles. If you know the episode with Forever, it's from the latest season. Exactly. So these three perfect little angels can not be perfect little angels. But that's my opinion yeah. on them. But that was in that's the adult of me. The other half of me okay. love the show. In addition to the Rara Boys introduction episode, one of my favorites would have to be the one that features Dexter's Knife Guard. There's Valhalla and Hades. Oh yes, the and thunder and thunder. Speaking mm. of the, speaking of them, next show is Dexter's Laboratory, a American science fiction anime television series by General Fikoski, who is a genius. And because well, he created so many shows. The first neck word was cartoon cartoons. The series followed Dexter Boy Gene and Vince in secret laboratory basement, being bothered by his sister Dee Dee. And attempt to deal with his lab, try to keep it a secret of rivalry with a fallen Jesus named Mandark. But her name, but his name is actually Susan. <laughs> Susan. Yeah, poor Mandark. Yeah. You don't feel sorry for him. Yeah, true. Anyway, the animation of the show was as such: Craig McCracken followed Seth MacFarlane, Butch Hartman, and of course Rob Renzilla. And scenes include, mm -hmm. and also some sort of cartoons were in the show, which, as he put it up. The, the, uh, who are those heroes called you were talking about a moment ago, honey? The Justice Friends. Yes. And of course, Monkey! Yep. The Justice Friends were basically based on Marvel Cap characters. Captain America, Incredible Hulk, and of course, uh, Thor. Thor. Thank you, Others. honey. Let's see. Living Bullet? He was based on Thor's Bullet. He was basically a combination of Quicksilver and Iron Man. 
Definitely. Tiger, of course, Mr. Peter Obisane, as well as Black Panther, Capital G, and then. Yes, but we're talking about not them. We're talking about the most important character, Dexter, the inventor, who can a silly creep. I mean, he can create many items, and he always makes mistakes though because that potato, that potato one. He tried to use a whole potato to power his whole lap. That's just so cuckoo. And keep the sister out, please. You can't keep your sister out. Trust me, I know. Yeah. You think he had some anti-DD booby traps? The thing is, when it come. Oh, sorry. Go on. Hey, Mom, when I was just Mom. Sorry, that's his mother. And in any case, do my. Well, I Sure. That's my boyfriend's mother in the back. Yeah. In any case, mm -mm. Dexter got his cleanliness and perfectness in the way he acts and red hair from his mother, who is a workman in the kitchen. And he and she tried to keep her husband out of it, like uh, Dexter tried to keep Dee Dee out of his lap. <laughs> oh, yeah. He says, you better get out of my lap. I tell you never to come into my kitchen. And Dee Dee's dad is a lot like Dee Dee. Only they both do sports. They both are very allergenic, and they're both very not hygienic. And as it shows later in the series, he is a dirt guy, and she is a neat freak. So that's where Dexter got all the neatness from. His mother. Don't ask, don't ask what they meant. It's complicated stuff. In any case. The Dee Dee had all, also her two, her two friends, Lily and Mimi, and they were very adorable little girls. But there was one episode that got me confused. Why did Dee Dee thought that baby turtle was a, was a bird? That's a turtle, not an eagle. Even her friends knew she was stupid. Oh, duh. I think it was a hawk. Yeah, it was a hawk. Sorry about that, love. Old oh, mind's working. In any case, also we have Magnoc, who is in love with Didi, but Didi hates him. And Dexter, yeah. well, tries to use that for sometimes of his episodes. <laughs> and his parents are both hippies. Oh, God. Yes, and Magnoc also has his little sister, or Lala Baba, who only appeared in one episode. Only one, one. Only one. I wish we could see more of her, because I want to see more of the dynamic between these two. She does appear in Blee Man's little comic book. Well, you're up here. Yeah, but you can't see me on her end. Then you must be on her end. <sighs> Ma, please, we're doing a review. Please. Kathy. I mean, Kathy, Kathy. Please, Kathy, we're doing a review. Please. We'll figure it out after this, okay? Well, someone's going to come out before I interrupt it. <sighs> <sighs> I apologize, guys. We're communicating through camera systems, and I'm trying to make everything okay, okay? Hi, Karamba. Sorry. Any case, I don't know how. I tried. Not good. Still learning. <clears throat> Enough of that. Next is Batman, the anime series which I grew up with. Batman, based on the DC Comics superhero Batman, developed by Bruce Timm and Eric Random Six, produced by Walt Wall and Warner Brothers, and made already the air of Fox Kids, of course, and of course with a classic, so Batman. Batman was my favorite hero when I was a kid. I mean, come on. He lost his parents to a guy named Jack Frost. Somewhat. No, nah, Winter. You mean Joe Chill. Joe Chill, sorry about that reference. <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, old theories in my head. But yes, Batman grew up with the, of course, butler, sidekicks, and all that. Amazing technology, and always good and intelligent, and also had a good influence by his butler. Now you go, love. So, yeah, this is basically what got me into the Batman. Along with the movies by Tim Burton. This is also the first... I mean, you have actors Kevin Conroy voicing Batman, and Star Wars actor Mark Hamill providing the voice for the Joker. Although Tim Curry was originally offered the role of the Joker, but Mark Hamill got the role instead. 
True. This also serves as the first on-screen appearance is a uh, Poison Ivy and Killer Rock and Ray Shell Ghoul. Exactly. Other classic Batman villains. And there's some classic ones. Mr. Free, the Penguin, Joker, Harley Quinn. Of yep. course. In fact, Harley Quinn was meant to be a one-off character, but the fans loved her so much, she stuck around and became a mainstay in the DC Universe. And who so wouldn't it's... love her? She's red and black, my favorite colors. Not to mention... And she's just as cuckoo as the Joker. Mm -hmm. Then there's the then there's the Riddler, and of course the Catwoman herself, my favorite characters, and Two yep. Face, one white, one black. <laughs> I love the show growing up. It was either Batgirl I liked, or Robin, or Batwing. I mean, Darkwing, <sighs> Nightwing, Nightwing, Nightwing. Yep, Nightwing. Also, the saddest part of the series was Clayface losing everything just because of misusing cream. Mm -hmm. I felt awful yeah, for him. Yeah. I felt sad for the pain. I felt sad for Mr. For Mr. Frost too. Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze, yes, and for Catwoman. For sometimes, I believe that Catwoman and Batman were a perfect duo, perfect for each other. Yeah. It's been happening many times in the series, even in different series like Brave and the Bold. You know what I mean. Yeah, hey, I know. My favorite villains were Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, Catwoman, The Riddler, Mad Hatter, because they're both intelligent villains, and Mr. Freeze. But not Joker, because I, I have a fear of clowns. I hate clowns. I would rather smack him in the face and cut his head off and throw it as a beach ball. Yeah, one of my favorite Batman villains would have to be Bane, but the, since he was seen as a villain character, he only had here in a few episodes in this universe, in this anime universe, which is what this Batman show ended up spawning. Yep, that's true. But here are, but here's the, as they call the Batman family, Barbara Gordon, Dick Grayson, and of course other characters, but that'll be a different day. And one of the most nasty and notorious villains was Ra's al Ghul, the kind of character I really hate. He is really creepy. At first, he wanted to make Batman his heir to his throne. He didn't even let his daughter do that part. But as you see, I wish there were, I wish we could say more of Ra's al Ghul in the Batman series. I mean, how many times did Ra's al Ghul did show up in the Batman series? Three or four times, love. Do you hmm. know? I don't know. I can't remember. Well, whatever the case may be, Batman is on the case. And Batman's TV movies were awesome as well. But here's a clear fact that you should know back in the 80s. They were planning to do a, um, they were going to do a proposed spin-off series due to the success of the show. Fox approached Bruce Timm to make a series of centered on Catwoman, but the project was scrapped due to the favor of Superman the Animated Series. Now, it would have been awesome to see Catwoman, wouldn't it, love? Hmm. My relationship with my Jago, I'm Catwoman and he's Batman. Uh, We're perfect for each other. <laughs> no, <perfect. laughs> Any case, they made so many Batman anime movies. I only like the Batman anime movies because, well, they're a lot better. And so other shows stirred up from there was the new Batman series and, of course, Batman Beyond. Which is too bad, mm. though. I wish they continued more of it. In any case, guys, let's continue with our next show. Our next video the hero is Spider-Man 1994 TV show. No, Spider-Man anime series. American this TV show. In yes, and it's the only Spider-Man show where we have the Kingpin. It's the only show where the Kingpin is. This is the reason why I like the Spider-Man show, because it's the only show where we get a good Venom and a good Mr. Kingpin. Seriously, though. Spider-Man was, as usual, as always. James Jones and James were a jerk. And, well, of course, Mary Jean Watson, wonderful as usual, but her mom, ugh, what an immoraneous. Uh, actually, it's Mary Jane's aunt. Oh, aunt, apologize for that, love. In any case, the first episode that scared me was The Night of the Lizard. That one really scared me out of my biscuits. I mean, come on, a giant lizard who wants to turn his wife into a lizard and a son. That's kind of disturbing, isn't it, Jacob? Yes. Despite that, Dr. Connors became an ally of Batman, an ally of Spider-Man throughout the rest of the show's run on occasion. Mm -hmm. 
And then we got Venom into the case. The episode that yeah. I really liked was when when he became when Spider Man became Venom. But unfortunately he became really bad and worse to most things, so he had to separate himself from it. Yeah. And believe me, it was a really okay. good time. This was actually Venom's very first on screen debut. Correct. He did appear in comics in the eighties, but this was the first time he appeared on screen. Agreed. Along with his original host, Eddie Brock. Oh yes. Oh, Eddie he Brock. appeared in the total three episodes. In the show, we know that he had met the X Men, Fantastic Four, which I don't like. Iron Man, uh, Daredevil, yay. Blade, nah. Doctor Strange, oh yeah, he's awesome. Punisher, no. Captain America, oh yeah, he's my favorite. I love Captain America. But also, the best comedy, the best battles he had was either with the Kingpin or the Green Goblin. I would say the King King, the Kingpin, because the Kingpin is well. He's a character that likes big things. Mm. This was the only show where the Kingpin was in. He has he, he did he did appear in the old shows, yeah. but never in the new East made Spider Man show. And he every he made oh, appearance yeah. in the original anime Spider Man series from the sixties. Yes, but he did and then he was one off episode. I know, but he didn't appear in the new show. I don't new... know whether to control my strength or my anger. Mm. But he didn't show up in the newest series. Only the one only the only this one that I knew of. Because I didn't watch the ones from the 80s. I watched the one from the 90s. And this is a 90s show, honey. The Kingpin only got to show up only in this series. And I'm just glad they made him really fiery and feisty. Now, Spider-Man had Mer had his aunt, had his aunt, great aunt as usual, who is a wonderful you know, Aunt May. Yes, thank you, love. And of course... Also, this is the first show that featured a version of the Sinister Six. Oh, yeah. And this is Although, the... Mm -hmm. it was called Insidious Six through the censorship, which I is know. odd because they had Mr. Sinister in the X-Men show that was out at the time. True. Also, this was the only time when we got to see Dr. Octopus's good side because he was part of Peter Parker's memory when he was just a little boy. This is the only thing we I, I liked about Dr. Octopus because he was once a teacher to young Peter Parker when he was just a lad. Your thoughts, love? Hmm? Your thoughts, love, on, the, on Dr. Octopus's human side when he saw Peter Parker? I mean, try to remember he was one of his students? Yes, I think that was in Dr. Octopus's introduction episode. Indeed. And then in uh, that once in a while episodes, Peter Parker would have the chance to meet Dr. Octopus again. And it's in series of six, as you said. But then, well, let's just say it was when Spider Man was losing power. And then he became that evil spider monster. He tried to go rid of yes. the cure. In the old comic, the reason he was losing his powers was because he was feeling partly responsible for what happened to his uncle, not because of a genetic mutation. Oh, good thought, and love. They, and they originally planned to have all the Sinister Six original members appear. However, Vulture had yet to appear. Craven was more of an anti hero in this show, which runs me. Because Craven's one. And Craven didn't make many appearances, which bums me because he's one of my favorite Spidey villains. And Salmon and Electro were out because they were going to use him for a planned Spider Man film that didn't go through. As for me, my villains well, are. Well, Electro did appear <laughs> later, but it wasn't the Maxwell villain, it was the son of Red Skull. Oh, yes, the Red Skull. One villain that reminds me of <laughs> Hitler. Yuck. My villains that I like is the Kingpin, Dr. Octopus, and the most evilest creature ever. At least he's not the, the Joker. Green Goblin, who is the father of Peter's best friend. Which is kind of ironic. Because he became... Let's see, his name is... Uh, Harry Osborn, yes. Harry's father, Mr. Mm. Osborne, was the original Green Goblin until he got trapped in door tags to a dimension, then he became the Green Goblin. However, due to the factor of a love of a girl that came and rescued him from he was trying to marry Mary Jane, he was saved. And after that, Harry Osborne never connected himself with his father ever again because he was trapped in another dimension. This is the real Mary Jane watching. As you know, the Mary Jane that mm. married Harry was a water clone. I know my facts. Our next program. Oh, your final thoughts on the show, honey? 
It was actually a good show. And Jim Kimmy did an awesome job with the shocker. I did indeed, love. The next, our most favorite one is <clears throat> SWAT Cat Radical Squad and created by Karina, I mean, Christina and Yovine Tembe, produced by Hanna Barbara Productions. The series takes Hanna place Barbara. in a fictional Thank you, love. In a fictional town, a fictional place called Mad Cat City, populated by abnormal female village called Cats, titled with the. Uh, SWAT cats, a two Virgo pilot who possess a state of art fighting jets with a rain weaponry throughout the series and the face of various villains who competed with mega cats, military police force called the Enforce. You know what I mean? Enforcers. Yes, Enforcers. Whew. In any case, I loved the show growing up as a kid because A, it was awesome, B, it was, had a lot of battle strategies, and of course, heroes and villains battling each other with Your opinions? I definitely love the show, despite there being a few deaths in some episodes. And I especially love the episode that actually explained the Swan Cat's origin. Oh, yes, the pilot, you'd say. <laughs> especially when. Actually, the pilot episode was the one who introduced the, the Pathmaster. Well, I call it a pilot episode because that's when their story is told, to my eyes at least. Yes. In any case, my favorite character was always Charlie and his friend. That, oh, oh, wait, I know, I know, I know. That, their, I know their nicknames are T Bone and Razor Love. I'm yeah. reading a script here. The two names are Chan, Chance Stone and Jake. And Jake. I know. Clawson. The Enforcers were just a bunch of jokes, but T Bone and Razor? Ow, they got claws for action. Yeah. Being, yes, this also gives him a chance to make a monkey out of their old boss, Feral. <laughs> <It's not laughs> what are they doing here? Your job, Feral. Ouch. That's gotta hurt, baby. Callie and Jake are a really good couple. And also, Chance has a crush on... Do I got the names right, love? Yep. Okay. Callie and Jake. Chance, Jake. Chance is in oh, love people. with his former boss's daughter. Or niece. Niece, actually. Niece, yes. And believe me, those two work really well as a team together. I mean, come on, seriously. I really wish they could just call a Claude out and marry already, for Pete's sakes. And the villains that like, scared me out of my wish was, oh, God, Dark Cat. Oh. Their arch enemy. Look. He is evil. And the past <clears throat> master. Those two. Oh, that's a little gorgeous. Yeah. That's Jaco's doggy. Yes, something is believed that it was originally planned to have Dark and a, a judge on the sidelines. He's basically the only one the main Spock had villains, aside from Pathmaster, the Metallic Cats, and Viper, who didn't get an origin story. I wish we and did. Come back say he's basically the Spock and world version. And of Satan. Mm -hmm. Scary as hell, I would say. Also, and the show for a total of two seasons, 13 episodes each, including four 10 minute episodes. In latest news. Another, oh, sorry, yeah. love. Go on. Another character that became a fan favorite was Turmoil. The fan but hell, T Bone. Ooh, I'm all a tinkle. <laughs> Any case. As of July 23rd, 2015, I know this is old news, but Christian and Joan Timble announced a Kickstarter campaign for the review, and so far it's 2018, and there's nothing about it. Nothing about it. The only last information I have is convince Warner Bros. to bring back Squat Cats on Boomerang Channel, Cartoon Network, but unable to convince the parent network to commit for the new series. If you pass it on the project, however, Timbo is currently working on investors to create an independent episode of Squat Cats that will be available online streaming. So who knows? It could happen this year, next year, or maybe another millennium. You never know, could you, love? They are planning to put the Revival series onto a streaming service, oh. hoping to find the right one. That'd be wicked awesome. Oh, so there's an episode where they went to a evil version of their world. Oh, yes. Although, I think you'd have evil versions of Pharaoh and Polina. I would have. Rogue versions of their enemies. 
Yeah, I didn't have a good impression on seeing how the villains turned into It was like it was an alternate timeline. I know, but I didn't see the much of, it, of their enemies being good guys. Didn't work out that much to me. Didn't give me a good impression. But I did love the ghost episode. You know me. I'm in the paranormal. Yes. The Red Link. With the title. With the thing. Villain. He was after the mayor because the mayor. The mayor was the um, descendant of his of his enemy. Yep. Which was a very good episode. My last thoughts of it. The show was killer and. The guy should be feeling awfully sad, should be feeling bad for killing the show off air. I mean, come on, the show was rocking. Why did you have to cancel it? This show was awesome. I know you guys thought it was violent, but it's a TV show. It was for fun. Not for profit. Well, mostly toy professions, probably. <laughs> All right, love. Last, last, last chance to say anything about the show? It was actually great. After watching the video, it was that if the Squawk Cat had aired on Tsunami, it would have had more, it would have had even better success. Indeed it would, Jaco. Indeed it would. Our next program is a classic of dark entertainment on Disney. Gall Girl, the TV series. Produced by Walt Disney Producer Beauty, the Boy on Vision Television, originally aired October 24, 2000, I mean, 1994. Featuring nocturnal creatures known as the Gorgos turned to stone during day, spent a thousand years in Chad and Professor State, from the transformed into medieval Scotland, the Reagan and Monday New York, taking a role as city secret nighttime protagonist or protectors. And my favorite character duo was Goliath and Elisa Mother, who is a detective. Go on, love. Say your thoughts. Well, I'm basically like the character, like the gargoyles and the other characters. Uh, you see, you have Goliath, the leader, the trio, yep. Brooklyn, the red gargoyle, Lex, who's an example of what happens huh. when he makes dinosaur and pterosaur DNA. Who very dark and mysterious. Also, we Broadway, have... Way, yep. the bad one. Lexington. Yep, the small one who became the tech wing. Oh, of course. Broadway was more of the TV, edible, eating food, but also in the theater. And of course, Broad in Brooklyn. Yeah. And Hudson. Bro yep, Hudson, the old guy, the classic war. And of course, his dog companion. Bronx. Named after the Bronx Zoo. Ironic, isn't it? Very ironic. Well, Goliath was named after the biblical giant slain by King David. That is. The clan, on their awakening, named themselves after the locations around New York City. That's true. Lisa Mazza was one of my favorite characters because when I was young, it was hard to find a role model that wasn't, oh, I don't know, girly and act like an idiot. But Lisa Mazza was just perfect. Thin, smart, weird, red outfits. I mean, she dressed up as Belle for Halloween episode six. That was an awesome yep. episode. I remember that. But also, what David... The proposed to fuck. Oh, yeah. So David, David Zanatos was the voice of the guy from Star Trek, The Generation. Jonathan Frakes. Exactly. David Zanatos was... Best known for playing William Riker. I know. He was an evil villain in the show. Meticulate, evil, and nasty. I would say he was like... And obsessed with immortality. Exactly. He was between, let's see, he was like Megatron, Joker, and the Kingpin, an old body. Except he was more... Intelligent and handsome, mostly yes. than those three idiots. But he would born later in the show. Oh. Because he had a son, a little cutie. Yep. It turned out that his. Who Lexington ended up growing close to. I know. It turned out that his wife was the daughter of the fairy folk or the king or the queen mostly. And they ended up finding out that the boy had powers, and she even she had powers, only they awoken to save her from the king Oberon. I never liked those two. Yep. Oberon. Ugh. Other memorable characters include Demona and the oh, wife's Oh, yes. Evil. She was very evil to the core. She thought she could try to you get... You reminds me of Mystique. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But Mystique was a bit more, oh, I don't know, open-hearted, plus she had her son to worry about. Anyway. Yes. Demona and tried to... The pack. There's Wolf. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. who is revealed to actually be a descendant of the bear we fight, and that's sold to yes. slaughter the Goliath clan. I know, but... Bingo, mm-hmm. voiced by Jim Cummings, who does an excellent job of that Australian accent. There's my guy being a show-off, as usual. <laughs> that's a joke, love. I'm not trying to call mm-hmm. anything. Demona... Mm-mm. Was convinced did pay the Vikings to give him a chance so they, they could get the the goggles out of there. But unfortunately, Goliath was being too heuristic, and in the end, Demona ended up living a hell life of living for centuries until her half of her body was paid with. Well, go on, love. You know his name. Puck. Yes, Puck. Or, no, no, not Macbeth. Puck. Not you Puck, mean, honey. Sorry. You mean Macbeth? Yes, Macbeth. Who also changed his ways later yes, on the show. Exactly. In the third season, it became light. It wasn't exactly as it was back then. And we start seeing. And in season two, we're introduced to Demona and Goliath's daughter, Angela. Angela. Named after an angel. It was known that Angela is the daughter, the birth daughter of Goliath and Demona. Demona didn't believe that, but then in the show, it mentioned that she did. And she started. She wanted to hang out with her daughter, sadly. Demona can never turn against evil. It'll always be around her, always be a part of her. She could never change, even for her little, even for her daughter. It could never happen. I've seen parents trying to turn their ways, and she's not. And there's a list of them who try their best. But then mm-hmm. again, it's a sad thing to see her trying to gain gain mm-hmm. trust with her daughter. Trust me, I have that with my mother. You guys know the history. Of my mm-hmm. mother. Let's not forget Jekyll and Hyena. Oh, those two Jekylls. Who became cyborgs. Oh, yeah, because they wanted to have more power. But to tell you the truth, the only member of the pack that turned good was... Bingo. Yes. Fox. Yes. Yes. Bingo wore that cyber suit and ended up wearing yep. a different DNA in Australia during the time when Goliath... Bronx, Angela, Annalisa Mazar were traveling. And they were, they were in Australia! That's where my Jaco lives! That's where he lives! Yep. He's a lovely and fellow. In, in the giant comics of Gargoyles, Bingo ended up becoming part of a group called the Redemption Squad, facing that old version of DC Suicide Squad. Thanks for the info, love. Here's my info. Brooklyn ended up traveling to a different dimension, and then as he got back, he had a wife and kids. Which, Actually, he ended up traveling through time. I know. Dimensional time. Yes. Hi, love. I say it differently because it's how I am. Please don't get upset at me. Love you. That's okay. <laughs> In any case, I adore this show as much as anyone else. And Jayco and I both love the show. We both have a lot of common things with it. Yeah, I basically grew up with it. So did I. Watching it on a Disney. Disney Afternoon, love. Yeah. Although there was something called Saturday Disney here in Australia, oh, which yeah. I want on all the other classic Disney shows. Good to know. Right, in any case, my last thought is, Lisa's brother, you should have listened to your sister. You were turned to a yeah. monster. Yep. A panth, a winged werecat, so I to speak. Creepy. No. And he ended up blurring the truth but later on. Yep. You know, next to our next show of the night, Beast Wars Transformers. But notice, mm-hmm. but notice, titled Beasties as a American can- can- Canadian computer TV series by the company that made, of course, the original. I mean, mm, created by the same people who did reboot the series, and this con- this show was really good. It was set in the future of the original Transformers confusion. However, Everly revealed that they had traveled back in time. For the series begin actually a time where the Earth was still young. Go on, Left. Yeah, this is basically what got me into Transformers. So. The only episodes I saw on TV were the one with the Sonic and Minnow, where Rhinox was in- stalling the Sentinel program. The one where Rhinox was reprogrammed into a Predacon. Oh, the that one was ep- really good. The episode of the Dinobot clone. Mm-hmm. And the episode that introduced Air Razor. No, the ep- well, oh, those four episodes. I eventually got all three seasons on DVD. That is true. In any case, my favorite characters were, of course, <laughs> Optimus Prino, Cheetor, Rhinox, Dinobot, or should I say Dinobot? 
<laughs> and of course, Rat Trap. I love those too. Dino Bot and Rat Trap are like two couples and a maiden dance, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and Megatron. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's the. Yes. It sounds like he sounds like he's losing his balls. Excuse me, language love. Yeah. When he says the yes, it sounds like he's dropping something, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and of course, there was the golden disc. There was actually a pilot that went with it. Sadly, no one ever knew about it, but I have the pilot somewhere on my internet. So, one of these days, I'll show you the link of it one of these days. Yeah. Bless me. The yeah, Dinobot started off as one of the bad guys, but he ended up being kicked out for trying to challenge Megatron for leadership. Or trying too hard. Then at one point in the first episode, we saw the Stone Pillars, as we know as... Jacob? Stonehenge, or something yeah. similar. Exactly. I do believe the show was very good, and of course, one of my favorite villainous girls who ended up leaving them, because, well, evil reasons, of course, was... Yeah. Exactly. Who fell with Silverbolt? Because I believe Jake was a lot like Silverbolt, and I'm the bad girl in this group. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Those two were adorable together. A wolf and a spider. How romantic. Well, a flying... Well, oh, I know, I know, love. Use an eagle will use it. Or... I know, love. So yeah, the other memorable characters, there's Scorpion, yeah. who showed as Megatron's right-hand bot. Yep. Pterosaur, who... Oh, didn't last long. My third is the this... show's version of Starscream in season two, unfortunately. Uh, yep. That's true. Tarantulas. Mm-hmm. Who many fans believe is a descendant of Unicron or something. It's actually really true. You know, I you know I brought that up in our story, remember, Jacob? As I did the day before, yeah. he is the descendant of Unicron. And he didn't want anyone to know about it. He didn't want that secret to be known. And he was finally <laughs> And then you got Waspinator, the universe's oh, yeah. chew toy. Or punch a big Waspinator wants to be big. Waspinator is going to get smacked if he doesn't get on my face. It <laughs> yes. In the final episode, where uh, Rat Trap was talking about his bread parts collection, he asked the gang, You know how many pieces of wasp leader I got? Also, there's one episode that I know that tends to be a classic among others. When Starscream returned for one episode! It was amazing! One of my favorite yeah. episodes. And Starscream tried to be parked up. later in the introduction of Frame Page that his spark is indestructible, which explains how he's. Being blown to bits. So, oh, it is true that in Transformers Generation, as we talked about last time, his ghost would bounce and bounce and bounce and then the series of Generation 5. So, Generation 1, so it would make sense for it to continue on even in Beast Wars, honey. Yes. In some cultures, the show is called Beasties instead of Beast Wars, but then again, yep. that was just for toy reasons and all that. And let's not forget Tigatron. Oh, oh yes. Who is like the. Uh, Shere Khan of the bunch, but a good tiger nonetheless. A white tiger, yeah. what beauty. The Hello. first new character to appear. Exactly. And then you got Inferno, the fire end. Oh, yes. Very loyal to Megatron and took Scorponauts. Save the queen! And he always, he always calls <laughs> yeah. Megatron my queen. Um, <laughs> yes. Inferno <laughs> became taken in command after Scorponauts and Pterosaur fell in... To the lava or the Paragon base. Oh, but it would be really yes. big. You'd think the Maximals would also be wondering where Scorbunon and Pterosaur are. Yeah, they probably find. They probably know in their minds that they're gone. That's yeah, anyone's guess. Also, yes, me and other fans have also had an idea of what happened if the quantum surge energy mixed with the heat of the lava, causing Scorbunon and Pterosaur to fuse together, hmm. forming a creature called Terrace Thing. That would have been interesting, but it never happened, love. How was it did, love? It would have been grand. And then we finally found out that the Earth was just a testing site for aliens. And the aliens thought that yeah. the um, Maximals and the Predacons were a pain in the butt, so they tried to destroy them all. Luckily, they yeah. did not win. The aliens did not win, yep. whoever they were. I always fought for them. Later on, they were yeah. called the Volk. V-O-X. Volk. V-O-K, actually. Well, I'm sorry, but my, my, I say Volk, you say Volk. Potato, potato, as I say. In any case. Actually, it's an X. I did say X, love. I'm sorry, it's how I am. It, 
It's still be okay, actually. Sorry, but where I learned it from, it's spelled that way I know it. Let's not argue, yeah. love. Better not fight. So, mm -mm. Another memorable character that came in in the final season was Death Charge. Oh, yeah. Never liked him. He wasn't a team player. But also yeah. there was... A good cross between Batman and Aquaman, you might say. Oh, yeah. But also, Air Razor and Tigerstorm were the first romantic couples. Also, in some of the episodes, yep. um, Air Razor thought Rhinox was a father figure because he was the one who we, we he was the one that woke her, awoke her. Yep, and she and Chiro are like brother and sister because Chiro is also partly responsible for saving her life. And so same thing, get. same thing with Tigerstorm, big cat and little cat. Love that nickname. I had that same nickname with my cousin actually. Would you believe we call? And of course, let's not forget Quick Strike, mm -hmm. the scorpion with the cobra tail. Would you believe me and my cousin were called Little White Rose and Big White Rose? That's all I'm gonna say. But yeah, Silver Strike had a crush on Black Widow. You know what I mean? Black Arachnia. Black Arachnia. Sorry, love. Get me out of here. <laughs> In any case, <clears throat> these two would always fight over for Black Arachnia, Silver Bolt. And Quicksilver, but also there was one episode that got me Quick well. And Chiro, you mean Quick Strike, right? Yes. Yeah, Quick Strike did develop. Push on her. <clears throat> there was an episode that was really made me want to cry and sad. The episode where oh, I hate, I can't talk about. It makes me want to cry. Well, one of the pods. Yeah, when one of the pods came and awoken a creature that was. Somewhat oh, yes. unique. Transmutate. Voiced by the original voice actress of RC from G1. It Very was beautiful. beautiful. It was a beautiful story. At that point, we saw Silver Strike and, Br and, and whatever. Don't ruin the common sense. Seriously. I'm trying, okay? I'm upset, okay? Silver Strike and Silver Bolt. These two got along in this episode. In the end, Silver Bolt. Not Quick Strike. I apologize, love, but please. Sorry. As they say, Rampage and Silver both, both in the end, were at, were at truce because Rampage was basically feeling sad for his lost friend, who would have been a very good friend. Well, so. Similarities between himself and Transmutate. Exactly. This episode always got me upset. In the end, Silver Bolt respected Rampage when he was respecting his for his friend. And that's all. I can't talk about this episode. It makes me want to cry. I didn't hate you. himself to save the early humans. Oh, yes. That one was very Doing sad. Doing truly had honor. But that one's more of a samurai. Anti-hero would be the correct term, yes. love. He's basically like a samurai. He also we appeared again. As soon as I can as soon as like, the connection between him and Rampage was cut, the real Dinobot awoken in the new Dinobot. Yes. There was supposed to be an episode where Ragnarok would bring down long Dinobot's country. Say, the Dinobot clone. I'm Explain what Dr. Bob was up to. Unfortunately, the it, it was deleted, love. Even I knew about it. Yeah. The show ended with the Maximals being victorious, mm -hmm. then Megatron losing. Almost all his troops, except for Waspinator. Who's just shit on Earth. Well, in Beast Machines. Yes, but now, next show, and the last one of our list. Da -da 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 -da! Captain Planet and the Planeteers, the great show that was created by Turner Program Service and Deke Anim Entertainment's broadcast on TBS. But as for me, it was on Cartoon Network for me. Oh, I loved the show as growing up. Captain Planet was an amazing person. And of course, Indeed. And of course the characters that I love that they were very nice. Let me get to my list. Ah, here we are. Kwame, Wheeler, Linka, Guy, and Monty. Um, Monty. Yeah. Each of them going from a different continent. 
Linka Ooh. was my Linka was my favorite character. There were a lot of episodes that were very dark in some situations. In fact, there was one episode where their Captain Planet met Hitler, the most evil of the monsters. Hey. Oh Lord! You turned off the light, or it showed that Captain Planet can't just be weak by pollution, but also by heat, because he has the That's the first time he's used the power of empathy, even from the power of heart. Showing that if the strong man hit around, he can be weakened by that as well as pollution. There is also the Ecto villains, a small group of antagonists who carry da- who cause danger to the planet through pollution and poach and other environmental and safe actors. At one point, they even created a ring that, that created a new being. And yes, believe, their own version of Captain Planet. Captain Pollution, pollution who had the basic I ability. In the introduction. In the pilot, two more pilot ups. So, the, the new adventures of Captain Planet that where it was bought by Nuna Barbera. The ring? It was later that mm. I actually watched his origin episode. <coughs> the ring that. Of his powers. The ring that made a part Captain Pollution was Super Radiance. Super Radiation. Radiation. D4 Station from Loot and Plunder. From Sly Sludge, it was Smog Ring. From Venomous Scum, it was Sludge Ring. Smog and Sludge, they're a little bit the same. And for Dr. Flight, Hate Ring. Counterpart the Hate yep. of the Heart. So, yeah, Captain Pollution was scary as heck. Yuck. The comics, Sludge was replaced by Greenly. The one for Greenly all the Sludge. These villains were all creepy. Well, as capable as the other villains, I'd say he'd have to be the worst, so, the main six. Like, the only time you see all the evil villains together is in the two part episode Summit to City Earth, with uh, Owen the Leash of the Bazaar. In any case, the episodes that were really dark at this time was Mind Pollution and a Formality for Hate. Formula for Hate, actually. But if I it, remember those episodes, no, both which bad. involved that rat scum. Oh, yes. My well, pollution. Things, like drugs and hives. And Linka and Linka losing her, her cousin to bliss. Boys jump through a window and dive with the drug overdose. Oh god, that's scary as heck. Yeah, but poor Linka. Yeah, losing a cousin. Um, and I'm only gonna say this once, but I had a relative that almost got himself done that way and he's alive. All I can say is he was somewhere else in a year or two, and now he's out of there, and he's been out of there for years now. He is doing very well in another world, and part of the world. He has a wife and a kid. He's doing very well. So all I can say is, kids, if you're watching this, don't do drugs. It's not cool. It's the opposite. It's bad. Yuck. Go on, love. Sorry, I have to do that. Oh, yeah. Where's the point of came from different parts of the globe? You got uh, yes. from Africa, mm-hmm. who's, who's in the earth, allows him to create fields, Wheeler, from New York, mm-hmm. control the power of fire. Linka, from Soviet Union, later episode of state to be East in Europe. And G, from like Asian, G's control power of water. And Mati, Mir, Amazon, Brazil, wield the power of heart. Well, I thought it was an important power, but eh, the show it was, kind of. Except Actually, his ring of heart allows granting telepathy and able it to feel the emotions of others and influence positive emotions. Oh, yeah, that's true indeed. And then again, it was well pointed out in the episode where the, where the pirate, where the, um, well, the plot, the, you know, these guys, they met a, a dimensional space monster. You know, that guy. He made him do a game show. Oh, yes, the one the alien. Yeah. With Casey Kissing voice. Let me find them on my list. No, I have I was... a I have a list here. Let me see. Villains. 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 Oh yeah. Zam. A former spirit of planet who left Gaia in search of the other world ended up laying up a popularity planet to rune lacking oh. Gaia's balance out of his methane. So Zom, or is it C A C A R M? I can't say it very quickly, lovey. Zarm. Zarm. Thank you, love. 
He once united Hoggis Greedley, Luton Slender, Sludge Sludge, Duke Nukem, Bottom Scum, and Dr. Blake under his leadership. Other times he would queue to manipulate others. He even planned tears to work for him, and Zim is the fifth Echo villain to appear in the series, having his first appearance in the sixth episode. Ugh. What a nasty guy. And as yes. I mentioned earlier before, ugh. Never. Basically, Eden. Spiegelman also has their own sidekick. Who strangely enough stopped appearing after season five. Mm. Rumor has that his voice character kind of, well, let's just say left the company for money reasons. He was fired. Sorry, folks, we took a little break. Okay, Digi, and finish what you were going to say. You were talking about the villains. Oh, yes. So yeah, except Bazaar, all the other villains basically have psychic of their own. So well, greedy, you have Rigard, who usually goes, nope, 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 or yep, 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 like Dougie from Land Before Time. Very stupid. Bazaar, he's not clean, who's basically the most competent of any of the psychic. Since that, here in the season 5, we were replaced by the Dean Van Plumberjack. Then you got Mal, who ended up being voiced by Tink. Sorry, some of the ex who were blind tried to. were blind put this glass dome around Hope Biden. Then you got Slice Lunch's sake. It ooze. And he will later get Tank, who will end up working for Greenland in season 6. As for Duke Nukem, he's got lead suit, who's Raleigh's, you know, the suit who's the Nukem radiation. The funny, you have Scum and his Rat Pack, who have rarely been seen. Scum usually, he works on his own. As for Slice Lunch, after In the new adventures of Captain Plan, He's seen the lead. Only making a total of two appearances. He's coming new, appearing even appearing less as well. Basically, this only folks. Basically, this show focuses on encounters with Blind, Plunder, and Greedley. That is true, love. They were all evil, way evil. But in the end, they get beaten by the Planeteers and Captain Planet. And there you have it. That's how much time we have left for the show. And I wish we could do the honorable mentions, but we'll do that next week. I mean, we'll do that on Tuesday, right? Would that be fine with you, love? Mm. The honorable mentions. The honorable mentions of the show were Godzilla series, X-Men, Wild Fallen Brace, Duck, Wing Duck, and Reboot. And we will do that Tuesday. I promise you, folks. Mm. Would that be all right, love? And don't forget, we didn't do the honorable mentions. That's what I meant. Those are the honorable mentions, love. Those are the 90s honorable mentions. I know. Okay, folks, that's all we have for time today and tonight. Good night, y'all, and see you last words, Jacob. See you next time. <laughs> Adios, amigos. Bye bye. <laughs> Okay, my brony watchers, remember to subscribe to my channel, and remember, there's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. <laughs>